Let's talk about rule 10 that is traffic separation schemes. So, rule 10a says that this rule applies to traffic separation schemes adopted by the organization. So, here organization means International Maritime Organization that is IMO and does not relieve any vessel of her obligation under any other rule. So, it simply means that other rules remain applicable. Okay, let me just show it here that the TSS adopt are adopted by the IMO and other rules remain applicable. So, that is the explanation of rule 10A. Now, let us move on. Let us move on. Uh, that is ship's routing that is published by IMO. This is a publication. You can see this book and uh, this contains uh, design standards and a list of adopted TSS. Well, uh, there are diagrams and coordinates of the TSS of various areas which you can locate while doing the passage planning and you can refer and be guided accordingly. So, here I am just giving you one example and here you can see this arrow and it means that is this is the inbound traffic and you can see this arrow that means this is the outbound traffic and there is a separation zone. So, now this is the time to define a TSS. Well, TSS traffic separation scheme is a plan that organizes traffic proceeding in opposite directions by means of a separation zone or line or sometime even a traffic lane. So, uh, just have a look here in case there are obstructions say for example, there is an obstruction here there is an obstruction here. Let me just uh, mark here. So, suppose there is an obstruction here that that is the time the TSS has to be kept away from this obstruction. So, as far as possible, the lanes are kept free from obstructions and for known obstructions such as there is an oil rig or rack uh, in the lane, that is the time the notices to mariner is given or any other tool is used to inform the mariners. Now, let us talk about rule 10 B that is Bravo. A vessel using a traffic separation scheme shall uh, proceed in an appropriate traffic lane in the general direction of traffic flow for that lane. So, so far as practicable, keep clear of a traffic separation line or a separation zone. So, here you can have a look on this traffic separation scheme and here we can say that a vessel is said to be using a TSS when within the boundaries. Yeah. So, if you are well within these boundaries, you are using a TSS and is neither crossing TSS that means you are not crossing TSS and you are neither fishing within the separation zone. So, this is the separation zone and neither you are fishing in the separation zone. Now, here there is a term so far as practicable. So far as practicable that means you should not be too close to the separation zone so that the other the opposite direction of the traffic uh, gets confused. Now, let us talk about rule 10 B third part that is normally join or leave a traffic lane at the termination of the lane, but when joining or leaving the lane from either side shall do so at as small an angle to the general direction of traffic flow as practicable. So, as simple as that join or leaving is uh, sorry joining or leaving is preferred at the termination of the TSS and there should be a small angle of approach or departure. Either you are joining or leaving, you should do at a very small angle. Basically, this is to differentiate from a crossing vessel. So, here let me give you the example. Well, this is the ship and the ship is supposed to join the traffic lane. So, it has to join at a small angle like this and then join the traffic lane. That is what it is. All right. Rule 10 C, a vessel shall so far as practicable 
avoid crossing traffic lane, but if obliged to do so, shall cross on a heading as nearly as practicable at right angles to the general direction of traffic flow. So, first of all, crossing of the traffic lane is not recommended. However, if you have to do it, do it at right angle. And what we are interested, we are interested in course to steer. The course to steer should be at right angle. Don't worry about course made good. All right. So, here, just let me explain here. Let me explain. Suppose this is the vessel and suppose there was no wind. So, this vessel has to go like this. Course to steer should be at right angle and the vessel will go like this. However, suppose there was a wind here and because of the wind or tide, because of the current, it will start drifting and the course made good will be like this. However, the ship's heading is still remain perpendicular that is at right angle to the general direction of traffic flow. So, that the other vessel understand that this is a crossing vessel and we have already discussed a vessel will join the traffic lane at a small angle so that you can differentiate from the crossing vessel. Let me just play this animation once again. So, if there is a wind or some tide, this will do the course made good like this. However, the heading will still remain perpendicular to the general direction of traffic flow. Now, let us talk about rule 10 D. A vessel shall not use an inshore traffic zone when she can safely use the appropriate traffic lane. However, okay, let me just skip some part. Uh, a vessel of less than 20 meter in length, sailing vessel and vessel engaged in fishing may use the inshore traffic zone. So, here let me just explain. So, this is the inshore traffic zone and the vessel less than 20 meter in length, sailing vessel and fishing vessel can use the inshore traffic zone. However, there is a second part and this says not withstanding with the first part. Uh, a vessel may use inshore traffic zone when en route to or from a port, offshore installation or structure, pilot station or any other place situated within the inshore traffic zone or to avoid immediate danger. So, if you have the port, you have no option but to go to the inshore traffic zone. If you have offshore installation or if uh, to avoid immediate danger, you have no choice but to go into the inshore traffic zone. That is what he is trying to tell you. So, basically uh, this segregation of the inshore traffic zone, uh, usually my interpretation is that, that uh, this is kept for to segregate the large vessels say, such as oil tankers from usual shipping. And uh, it also considered that the sailing vessel and a small part and vessel often needs to be near the coast. So, rule 10 E uh, is about crossing. So, a vessel other than a crossing vessel or a vessel joining or leaving a lane shall not normally enter. Sorry, let me repeat. Rule 10 E is about traffic separation zone. So, when you can enter traffic separation zone in case of emergency to avoid immediate danger and to engage in fishing within the separation zone. So, now, we conclude that there is a right to fish within the separation zone. So, here let me just summarize. You can enter a separation zone or a cross or cross a separation line the, in emergency, engage in fishing, crossing, joining or leaving lane. So, these are the conditions uh, or situations where you can enter the separation zone or cross the separation line. Now, rule 10 F uh, is about precautionary area. So, a vessel navigating in or areas near the termination of a traffic separation scheme shall do so with particular caution. So, usually there are precautionary areas marked. Okay, let me just show you here. This is uh, one of the straight, 
that is the Lombard Street and this is the precautionary area mark and this shows the general direction of the uh, traffic. So, even if there is no precautionary area mark, uh, you need to navigate with caution because it says so that at the end of the traffic separation scheme or at the start of the traffic separation scheme, you got to be very careful. Rule 10 G, a vessel shall so far as practicable avoid anchoring in traffic separation schemes or in areas near its termination. That also makes sense that similar to the prohibitions against anchoring in narrow channel or fairway, there is a rule for TSS as well. All right. So, rule 10 H. Uh, a vessel shall not use a traffic separation scheme, shall avoid it by as wide a margin as practicable. Basically, this is to allow a smooth operation and that smooth operation will depend on the absence of external disturbances. So, as long as there is no external disturbance, uh, there will be smooth operation. So, it is much advised that the vessel must stay far enough. So, that vessel in TSS is not obliged via any other rule such as 8 F 3. All right, 8 F 3 says that a vessel the passage of which is not to be impeded remains fully obliged to comply with the rules of this part when the two vessels are approaching one another so as to involve risk of collision. So, as simple as that if you need to avoid TSS, avoid it at with a wide margin. Then we have rule 10 I, a vessel engaged in fishing shall not impede the passage of any vessel following a traffic lane. So, basically fishing is permitted within the traffic lane as long as the fishing vessel is proceeding, uh, proceeding along the lane with the rest of the traffic that is fine. However, the fishing vessel should not impede the passage of any vessel as simple as that. So, this will be considered a violation of the rule if the other vessel following the lane has to alter course for a fishing vessel. You can report to the TSS as well or VTS. You can report to the vessel uh, traffic management system that uh, this fishing vessel is trying to impede the passage. Rule 10 J. A vessel of less than 20 meter in length or a sailing vessel shall not impede the safe passage of a power driving vessel following a traffic lane. So, for a power driving vessel, a lane is a safe passage. So, passage is for any vessel actually uh, uh, which is following a lane. Suppose, for example, uh, suppose a sailing vessel is following a lane, that is the time the fishing vessel shall not impede the passage. All right. So, rule 10 K interesting, a vessel uh, restricted in her ability to maneuver and when engaged in the operation of the maintenance of the safety of navigation. So, this is a kind of boy tender ship when using, uh, when doing the work. So, because of the nature of the work, it makes the vessel ram and this is exempted to comply from the rule. All right. Similarly, a cable laying ship uh, is exempted to follow a TSS because of the nature of the work and the text of the rule is similar. Now, let us come to the interesting part and that is the TSS uh, situations. So, first of all, here there are some assumptions that you are an officer of watch of a powered and vessel and you are following the appropriate uh, traffic lane in the traffic separation scheme. So, what you have to do? First of all, you need to identify the vessel and after identification of the vessel, you got to take a series of compass bearing of an approaching vessel and if the compass bearing does not change, the risk of collision exists. All right. So, you determine risk of collision, uh, we can say that the bearing is constant and range is decreasing, that is the time you determine, uh, you conclude that there is a risk of collision. 
So once you determine the risk of collision, take action. And you need to describe what kind of action you need to take. And there will be further question like while team doing taking the action, can you enter in the inshore traffic zone because you are in a TSS and there is an inshore traffic zone whether you can really enter. So let's come to uh, this situation and here this is a power down vessel and this is power down vessel is following a traffic lane. So there is another power down vessel which is crossing. All right. So let's study about the situation. Well, as per rule 15, that's the crossing situation. The vessel which has the other on the starboard side has to keep out of the way. So as per rule 15, uh, this is a giveaway vessel and this is a giveaway vessel. So it has to keep out of the way or it has to take action to avoid collision. So what action you need to take? Basically, slow down if the sea room permits. If there is no uh, vessel behind this and uh, there is a sufficient sea room, then you got to slow down and allow a uh, powder and vessel to cross. All right. Now, in case it is not possible, there is a vessel behind and you cannot slow down then what you have to do one shot blast and alter course to the starboard and enter the inshore traffic zone because the rule 10 d allows you to enter in the inshore traffic zone to avoid danger and let this vessel pass now let's have this situation this is the pardon vessel following a appropriate traffic lane so pardon vessel is moving like this you are having a fishing vessel which is impeding, which is crossing. Well, rule 10i says that uh, we need to expect a fishing vessel to take action because it says that the fishing vessel shall not impede the passage. However, here we realize that the fishing vessel is impeding the passage. That is the time you need to sound at least five short and rapid blasts. At night, you can use the LD's lamp and of course inform VTS that this is a fishing vessel and fishing vessel is crossing the lane, impeding the passage. All right. So what action you have to take? Still, this guy doesn't listen. One shot blast, ultra course to starboard, make a broad alteration. You can go to the inshore traffic zone because the rule permits. Now, one more interesting. Uh, a case this is the fishing vessel and fishing vessel is doing the fishing but following the appropriate traffic lane and you are a pod and vessel which is following an appropriate traffic lane and then you need to decide what action you need to take well here the rule 13 will be applicable and which says not withstanding anything contained in the rules of part b section 1 and 2 so whatever is given in section 1 and section 2 of part b that is the steering and sailing rules any vessel overtaking other shall keep out of the way so here you are overtaking fishing vessel this is your responsibility to keep clear all right as simple as that so you can pass either side but you got to be very careful and keep clear of the fishing vessel while overtaking rule 13 will remain applicable So here you are a pardon vessel following appropriate traffic lane and you identify a dredger which is coming right ahead. Well, dredger uh, is a ram restricted in her ability to maneuver and usually there is a, in the night you will see that there are two green lights that means this is the safe side to pass and two red lights that is the obstruction side. So, as per the TSS rule 10K, this dredger is exempted from TSS and you need to pass on the safe side. And here on the port side is the safe side. So basically you will have slight alteration to starboard like this 
and pass on the her port side basically just to keep the vessel in general direction of the traffic flow do the slight alteration and pass because this dredger is engaged in dredging operation and doing some operation and this port side uh, is the safe side to pass as per the light shown so one more interesting situation this is a pardon vessel following the traffic lane and suppose there is a sailing vessel well sailing vessel is showing the lights all right and it is seen on the starboard side here or even at the port side basically a uh, rule 10g says the sailing vessel shall not impede the passage so we need to expect the sailing vessel to take action whether the sailing vessel is moving like this or the sailing vessel is coming like this you need to expect the sailing vessel to take action and if she is not taking action then as a pardon vessel sound at least five short and rapid blast at night use ld's lamp inform vts and if suppose this vessel is here then one short blast ultra coast to starboard make a broad alteration go to the inshore traffic zone because the rule allows all right as per rule 18 actually pardon vessel is the giveaway but here rule 10 will also be applicable which says the sailing vessel shall not impede the passage so let me reverse the scenario suppose this is the sailing vessel and sailing vessel is following the appropriate traffic lane and this is a pardon vessel and the pardon vessel is crossing so basically rule 18 says the pardon vessel is give a vessel all right so here the rule 10 c and 10 j 10 j is not applicable the rule 10 j says that a vessel less than 20 meter in length sailing vessel shall not impede the safe passage of a pardon vessel so here uh, the sailing vessel is not impeding the passage in fact the sailing vessel is uh, following the traffic lane and here the pardon vessel is crossing so the for crossing purpose there is a rule that is 10 c a vessel shall so far as practicable avoid crossing traffic lane but if obliged to do so shall cross on heading as nearly as practicable at right angles to the general direction of traffic flow now there is some extension suppose this is a pardon vessel following the traffic lane and you get the cvd so the rule 18 d responsibility says that the any vessel other than n other than n u c and ram shall avoid impeding the safe passage of a cvd so here as a pardon vessel you will avoid impeding the passage of a cbd and uh, reduce speed and if not possible then one short blast or it goes to starboard pass like this similarly if there is a cbd coming like this you need to avoid impeding the safe passage of a cbd so all you have to do reduce the speed and if not possible one short blast ultra coast to starboard and go into the inshore traffic zone and now we have one interesting uh, case that the you are a cbd following appropriate traffic lane and there is a sailing vessel so as per rule 18 d any vessel other than nuc and ram shall avoid impeding the safe passage of a cbd so you expect the sailing vessel to take action 